every living body is something like the flame of a candle. This living thing that you're feeling, like the gyroscope top, it's your own life. Because you can see very simply that you would not understand the experience that you call voluntary action and decision, being in control and being in yourself, unless in opposition to that, there was something else. You couldn't realize self and control and will unless there was something other, out of control, and instead of will, won't. It's the two together only that produces the sensation that you call having a personal identity. Only there is a funny thing about human consciousness which has been worked out very carefully in Gestalt psychology which is that our attention is captured by the figure rather than the background, by the relatively enclosed area rather than the diffuse area, and by something moving rather than what is relatively still. And to all those phenomena that in this way attract our attention, we attribute a higher degree of reality than the ones we don't notice. That's only because, for the moment, those are more important to us. Consciousness, you see, is a radar that is scanning the environment to look out for trouble. Just in the same way as a ship's radar is looking for rocks or other ships. And the radar, therefore, does not notice the vast areas of space where there are no rocks, no other ships. So in the same way, our eyes, or rather the selective consciousness behind the eyes, only pays attention to what we think is important. And so in this way, we have this uh, rather myopic way of looking at things. And we screen out from attention anything that is not immediately important to a scanning system based on sensing danger. But quite obviously, you as a complete individual are much more than the scanning system. You are in relationships with the external world that on the whole are incredibly harmonious. Going back to this illustration of every living body as something like the flame of a candle. The energies of life in the form of temperature, light, air, and food, and so on, are streaming through you all at this moment in the most magnificently harmonious way. And you're f all of you far more beautiful than any candle flame. Just sitting in these chairs, just zzz, going, you know? Only we are so used to it. We say about that, so what? Show me something interesting. Show me something new. Because it's a characteristic of consciousness that it ignores stimuli that are constant. When anything is constant, it says, okay, that's safe, it's in the bag, needn't pay attention to that anymore. And therefore, we eliminate systematically from our awareness all the gorgeous things that are going on all the time and instead only become focused on the things, the troublesome things that might happen to upset it. Which is all right, but we make too much of it. And become, we make so much of it that we identify our very selves, I, ego, with the radar, with the troubleshooter. And that's only a tiny fragment of one's total being. So that if you do become aware that you are not simply that scanning mechanism, but you are your complete organism, then very swiftly in turn, as a consequence of that, you become aware that your organism is not the way you think about it when you look at it from the standpoint of conscious attention, from the standpoint of the ego. 
From the standpoint of the ego, your organism is uh, your kind of vehicle, your automobile in which you go around. But from a physical point of view, your organism is again like the candle flame or the whirlpool. It is something which is a continuous patterning or activity of the whole cosmos. The key idea here is pattern. Let's suppose uh, I'm going to borrow a metaphor from Buckminster Fuller. Suppose we have a rope and one section of this rope is made of uh, manila hemp. The next section is cotton. The next section is silk. The next section is nylon and so on. Now we tie a knot in this rope. Just an ordinary one over knot. You find by putting your finger in the knot you can move it all the way down the rope. Now as this knot travels it's first of all made of manila hemp it's then made of cotton, it's then made of silk, it's then made of nylon, and so on. But the knot keeps going on. That's the integrity of pattern, the continuing pattern, which is what you are. Because you might, you know, be for several years you might be a vegetarian, and you might be a meat eater, and uh, so on, and you know your constitution changes all the time, but people, your friends still recognize you, because you're still putting on the same show. It's the same pattern that is, the recognizable individual. But we are trained in our language. The very structure of the language we talk deceives us into misunderstanding this. Because when we see a pattern, we ask, what's it made of? Like you see a table. Is it made of wood or is it made of aluminum? But then when you inquire into what is wood and how does wood differ from aluminum, the only thing a scientist can tell you is the different patterns, that is to say, the different molecular structure of the two things. And a molecular structure is not a description of what something is made of, it is a description of what dance it is performing, what motions, what kind of a symphony this is. Because basically, all phenomena of life are musical, and uh, gold differs from lead in exactly the same way that a waltz differs from a mazurka. It's a different dance. And there isn't anything that's dancing. That is a deception we get into because we have two parts of speech in our grammar. We have nouns and verbs. And verbs are supposed to describe the activities of nouns. And this is simply a convention of speech. You could have a language with only verbs in it. You don't need any nouns, or you could also have a language with the nouns only and no verbs. And uh, it would perfectly adequately describe what's going on in the world. So if you were used to speaking with a, part, with a language that had one part of speech, you could say just as much as we can with two, and be a lot clearer. Only at first it would sound awkward, but you'd soon get used to it. And then when you got used to it, it would be a matter of common sense that the patterning of the world is not some kind of stuff that's patterning. You don't have to seek for a substance underlying the whole thing, it's just patterning. And we're all that.